All right, hello. I'm going to show you how um, you can build and program the AVR that comes with the Chip Whisperer. So, in the Chip Whisperer folder under Hardware Victims, um, you notice this firmware directory. So, this firmware directory it has some example source code for doing AES and other encryptions. Uh, what you'll notice though is under crypto, where AES would go, there's nothing. Um, we actually have to copy another crypto library in there. I don't distribute the crypto library with this um, just to avoid some issues with exporting cryptography. I haven't 100% figured out uh, what's required to do that, so I just avoided it for now. All right. So, um, AVR crypto lib is what we need. And this is at daslabor.org. So if you just Google AVR Crypto Lib, uh, you'll have these links will pop up. So if you look for AVR Crypto Lib .org, and getting AVR Crypto Lib. Um, so I don't think there's releases of it. And you can just download a nightly build. Um, I'm just going to double check that. Yeah, so there's never uh, really releases per se. Uh, so we just get the latest version. And the only thing is that it's not in a zip folder, unfortunately. So I need to download something like 7-zip, um, which works pretty well for extracting this. If you, you might have other software you already use to extract uh, BZ2, um, I don't know. I know this does work 7-zip, so. So anyway, once this is, both these are downloaded. Um, install. There we go. Um, we'll be able to, uh, To extract it, so I've actually cheated. I already was download. I already downloaded the file earlier because I knew it would take a while. Um, so the AVR crypto lib, I'll say seven zip extract to some new folder. Um, so give that a second. So we can close this off for now. All right, so almost done. And then once that's done, we'll have a tar file, I believe, that we have to extract. It just does it one step at a time. <clears throat> so we made this AVR crypto lib. And I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, sure. So then it'll unpack the tar file. Um, so this file ends up being pretty big, as you can see, but uh, we actually won't need all of them. So we'll just wait till that finishes. Uh, so, <coughs> what you'll notice is that it gives you a directory structure we need to, I'm not sure, I don't care, to recreate. Um, so, within firmware, it says, okay, so crypto, and it's expecting you to have this AVR crypto lib slash AES. Um, so, what you can do if you want is you could copy this entire folder here. And uh, that will actually just work as is. You have to rename it to have these dashes in the name. Um, but you don't actually need all those files. So if, you, if you're copying this around or something like that, or you want to simplify things, so AVR crypto lib. Um, all you need is a yes, so I'm just going to delete everything else. And a51. There we go. In a yes, um, I just have the required file. So there we go. Um, oops. I hit enter there by accident. So you can see that we have the uh, the expe expected files here. Um, and there's a handful, I think, that don't get 
put in here by default. So there's this GF256. Um, so we'll go back to the downloads of your crypto live. Um, where are these? So there's a, just a handful I remember. And I should probably automate this, but if you look at into the uh, documentation, it'll all be there. Uh, here we are. So this G256 mall. You actually need to copy these two files into that same spot. All right, so let's go back. So I shouldn't have deleted everything, obviously, right away. Um, and I copy these two. Okay, so that should be everything we need is now in the right spot. Okay. Um, so now we want to try building this. So how do you build it? Well, to build it, we need another tool. Uh, we need to install WinAVR or WinAVR, whenever, however you want to pronounce it, pronounce whenever. And um, just say, whoa, what happened? Download here. And the latest version is, it's, WinAVR is not really used anymore in, um, for the latest stuff, it, that's the latest releases are integrated right into uh, the AVR tools, but here I'm just using WinAVR separately. Um, and the other thing you might want for programming the AVR, I'm using AVR Studio. As a note, if, you, um, if you're on Linux, all of these tools are available in different formats, more or less. So search for AVR Studio 4. This is an older version, and we're going to have to use that. And in the meantime, install WinAVR. And just go through the installer, English presumably, unless any other language, feel free. And just default everything. All right, well, that's going. I'm uh, going to cheat and start downloading AVR Studio 4. So you notice it um, comes up as a Studio Archive on Atmel. So as I said, this is a very old version of, uh, of AVR Studio, but it's also it's a much smaller installer. And if you're just going to be using it to program the device, which is basically what you are, then there's no point in getting the latest or the absolute latest. So just double check. Uh, so you can just pick uh, AVR, where is it, here we go, AVR Studio, say 4.9, 4.19, sorry, um, I don't think it really matters, right, so at my request to download it, they want you to register, if you have a registration, uh, an account, obviously you can use that, um, I have one, but I don't want to write it in here as I'm logging in, so I'm just going to use the cheat here. Uh, if I use something like Gorilla Mail, uh, it will require a valid email, I require, I believe. Go ahead and uh, Sharp Lasers Incorporated, Sharp Laser. There we go. So, it's claiming that we need to, now we can download AVR Studio 4.19. All right, wonderful. It is waiting for us. So, there we go. So it takes a minute to download, um, and let's go back. All right, WinAVR is finished installing. So it opens a handy manual here. Um, you can read through whatever the heck you want. And minimize that. So now what can we do? Well, now we can actually build this AVR serial. So to do that, um, I have to open a WinAVR 
terminal, um, or if I just open the command prompt, cmd, I believe uh, it adds AVRGCC to the path. I just need to confirm that. Yeah, it added AVRGCC. This is when I installed it, I told it to add it to the path. If you didn't do this, all you have to do is um, manually set it every time you run. So for the default, it doesn't matter. Um, so now what we do, we go to the directory with makefile in it, and also simple serial.c and uart. And it's in the avr daf serial directory. And I cd to that, I just copy and paste cd. Um, we now actually have some Unix commands available to us, you might notice. And if I go ahead and type make, it should tell me something. So what it actually says is that, hey, you can't just run make, you need to specify a, um, a MCU. Just going to make this a little bit wider so that maybe you can see what I'm typing without it wrapping around here. There we go. Um, so I type make MCU equals, and in this case, we're using an ATmega328P. This is what's on the target board by default. So if you did everything right, you'll end up with this thing that says program 2296. If you forgot something, um, so let me go back to crypto and say I forgot to copy these two files in. I'll just show you what that looks like. Uh, so you'll get, basically, it almost seems like a totally useless error. It just says, no rule to make target. And that's it. Stop. So you go, what the heck? It doesn't mention anything by name. Um, so if that happens, probably you just don't have all the files copied in. And I run it again, and in magic it works. So it is pretty picky about that. Anyway. Um, so now we have AVR serial. I have simple serial dot hex. Uh, this is the file I'm going to program in. So how do I program it in? Well, more installing. So I'm going to run AVR studio again. And we just go through, I accept all this crud. And we just wait for the installation to finish. Um, so I'm going to pause it for a second. All right, almost done. Almost done. And at some point, it, I believe, asks you about drivers or something like that. So you do want to install. If it gives you the option, the USB drivers. One of these windows might be them even. So we don't need any of these now. Oh, here we go. So here's the USB driver installation. So we use the USB drivers are actually is what um what's required for the programming itself. Okay, so all done. So we now have this Atmel AVR tools, AVR Studio um, 4. So this is what we were looking for all along. Now, the final thing we're going to do is set up the physical hardware for programming. So obviously, if you weren't using the Chip Whisperer, um, this you know specific target board, you could be programming any AVR. Um, so this part specific to the Chip Whisperer, the other stuff isn't. So here I have the AVR mounted. Um, so you can see, perhaps, I don't know if you'll quite focus. AT Mega 328P. Um, so there's some more details in the, the the printed version of this, but basically I have the clock going into the AVR here, clock um, going into the FPGA, the chip whisperer. I have jumpers mounted for the power, like so. 
Um, I have TX and RX, that's not important for programming. All of these jumpers here, which says AVR Pro, are actually not mounted. These jumpers are if you want to use an AVR smart card, like a Mega card or something. Um, so they're irrelevant and you shouldn't have them mounted. And finally, up here, I do have this 7.37 uh, megahertz jumper mounted. Um, so that is basically the critical part. And finally, I plugged my USB-A cable in um, at the end here. So we're not using the side cable. The end cable is used for programming. It's a different, completely different interface. Um, so when you program that in, you should get some sort of driver indication. So let's do that now. So here we are in our machine. Installing Avir ISP Mark II. Perfect. So everything worked. All right, now I run AVR Studio 4, um, and I hit this little connect to selected AVR programmers button, um, or you can hit con, it doesn't really matter, I think. Uh, what will happen is it'll pop up a window asking um, what programmer we want to use. As a note, sometimes it'll, so by default, it's trying to connect to something. We we did the wrong thing. Um, AVR ISP Mark II USB. So you want it like this, and then you hit connect. So if everything works, it connects somehow. So we're getting VTarget 3.3 volts. Uh, that's not actually measured. It always just says 3.3 volts. So you can look at hardware, firmware revisions. Don't let it upgrade uh, the firmware if it asks. It, won't work for sure. All right. So now sort of the moment of truth. We select the ATmega 328P and we hit read signature. And success, it works. So it's a reading signature from device. OK. Um, and you have access to all the programming. So if you're used to AVRs, this will be easy. Um, by default, the AVR that comes on the board is already set up properly, but for example, if you just got a new one, you might need to change stuff like you want to use the external clock because we have our own clock. Okay. Um, but what we want to do now is we want to point to that hex file I just compiled moments ago. So I'll just copy here and simple serial.hex was just built today. Um, January 30th, okay, and you hit program. So the program actually erases the device, reads it, and verifies it. So it's not just a program. So you don't need these other buttons. Um, there we go. So that's how we program the, well, first we build the AVR, and then we program it. If you're interested in what the firmware is doing, you can open this simple serial um, dot C, and oops. Obviously, uh, this is a new install of Windows, so it just wants to use Notepad, which is no good. Uh, we have WinAVR installed something called Programmer's Notepad, which if you don't have any other preferred editor, this is as good as anything else. So you can look at simple serial.c, and you can see it's basically, it does this super hokey um, protocol that you send a key, a plain text, and it sends you back the encryption. So somewhere in here, it, um, it actually will do the encrypt block, so AES independent encrypt, and that's what you're going to break in um, some of the later videos. All right, if you have questions, let me know through um, the comments. It's probably the easiest way. All right, thanks.